Gabriel, Stephen Phillips. Yes, it is. Mark Van Pletsen. And we are in our Move Again yes. series podcast as we are preaching through the book of Exodus, which we are loving and God is doing amazing yeah. things. We just take a moment during the week to talk about some of the preaching on the weekend, some of what God is speaking to us as a community. Yeah. And we're at that point beyond Sinai, which is where yeah. most people stop. They're like reading Exodus, cool, 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 mountain, cool, uh, tablets, cool. Oh, tabernacle details, stuck. Don't know what to do with that. Psalm 23, yeah, as you yeah. said on Sunday. Yeah, that's it. So we don't want to do that. We're jumping into the Word of God. Yeah. We're looking at these chapters, Exodus 25 to 40. It's very hard to preach to every detail every Sunday. Yeah. But we're diving down, looking and saying, what God, what are you speaking? What were you yeah. speaking to people then? How are you revealing Jesus in these amazing books? And how are you calling us as a people now to move again in and through this incredible book? Yeah. But you preached on Sunday, Gabriel. Yeah, I did. You told us about your new house. Yes. Moving in yes. to your new house. Yeah. Your green pool. Yeah. All of these things, important things. Uh, important things, uh, but, uh, but more important than that yes. are the chapters, I believe, chapters Exodus 25 to 40. I believe they are important. And yep. uh, as much as you said, the temptation is to just leave it out. There's 15 out of 40 chapters. Just let that, the, the sheer amount of that just set, set all new. 15 out of 40 chapters in Exodus are devoted to the building of the tabernacle. And the, and the processes around God's people worshiping Him. And that's, yep. that's the end. Actually, we realize at the beginning of Exodus, God says um, through Moses to Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. Incredible. And this is almost the fulfillment well, of that. You said 90 books in yeah, the first yeah, five books of the Bible. Yeah, 90 chapters of the first five books of, of the Bible. Incredible. About chapters, the tabernacle. Yes. So you realize this is significant. It's not a small thing. And then when you go and read the book of Hebrews, which is a great commentary, if you'd like, on the book of Exodus, on a lot of these narratives. Um, and it's in the Bible. It's not some secret extra book you have to buy. It's in the Bible. The Bible <laughs> interpreting itself. But it expounds on the fact how Jesus is the fulfillment of these yeah. shab- shadows and types. That Jesus is the better Moses. Jesus is the better high priest. Jesus yeah. is a better sacrifice. Uh, uh, based on a better covenant, better yeah. promises, a better hope. Yeah. And it's just incredible when we realize that Exodus is just pointing us to our Savior Jesus. And that actually yeah. we, are, we can learn lessons but, and that we've been set free out of slavery. That we are on a journey towards a promised land in heaven. Yeah. But actually we're also learning that we can worship Jesus now in fullness now, face yeah. to face, as the book of Corinthians says, with unveiled faces, we can behold his glory. And, uh, and I love the fact that tabernacle is this elaborate design. And it seems like it's keeping the people of God at arm's length away. But when we see Jesus, that actually it was the process that God used to draw his people into his presence. They may yeah. encounter him in a fuller way. And to reveal that he has a desire to be in the middle of the everything. Yes, come on. Every part. And that whole tabernacle, the design, is a point, yes. a picture pointing to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, come as on. you shared with us. From the entry point to the finality of his presence and the blood sprinkled on that mercy seat. Come on. Pouring us and showing us to Jesus yes. and, and, and who moved on our behalf. Yeah. And I mean, amazing. Some people get stuck. And I've heard even commentators as I've looked at Exodus, they're like, why the extravagance? 34 million rand would it cost to make that candle now? Yeah, yeah. That the candle holder. And I'm going, that's extravagant. Like, that's an expensive, extra- expensive it's like, uh, Why candle, would you right? expend yeah. for that candle? I mean, these are yes. people moving through a desert. Yeah. They're not... Um, there's no economy happening. Yep. There's no revolution of in- industry happening in the midst of them. No, there's just a people yep. on the move through a desert. There's people dying. There's people being born. There's all the challenges yes. being faced. God's sustaining them through manna. Yep. He's sustaining them through His grace and His goodness and His provision. Yep. And yet they're still in a desert. Yep. Why the extravagance? Yeah, I think it's because God says that He'll spare no expense for His people to encounter Him. And yep. I love the fact that it's in the wilderness. This is, yeah, yeah. It's a reminder that's actually saying... It's not, not one day when not, they get there. No, not one day when or when you've got it all figured out or when you are in... When circumstances line up perfectly for you. That, that has such reality and encouragement for me. That in the midst of tough toddler years, in the midst of tough teenage, almost teenage years, in the middle of crises, economic or just stress. midlife. Or, midlife. <laughs> in the middle of uh, peppermint crisp being taken off the shelf. What? Mark, you know, God still says you can worship him in the wilderness. Incredible. But all jokes aside, it is the privilege that actually, that's why this book, I believe, is not some esoteric, ethereal book out there for somebody else or for the it's elite. It's just a good narrative for the church no, to know. It's no, like no. this thing we know. It's like, no, it's very real for you and I here. And that's, yeah. that's why the title of the sermon I, for me was Move On In, because that's the encouragement. We're moving again, but actually, God says, I want you, it's not just a, a journey to heaven. It's actually yeah. moving on in now into his presence, yeah. into the fullness of who Jesus is. And actually, that's what we, we get to celebrate, that the tabernacle is pointing towards. Yeah, and I just love, for me, it almost exposes religion versus yeah. what Christ calls us into. Yeah. Religion means I can build a tabernacle. I can go home and build a tabernacle yeah. and try to replicate yeah. like guys do with Noah's Ark and go replicate the tabernacle at home, spend <laughs> all I can there, yeah. but still have no presence. Yes. Jesus says it was never about that. Yeah. 
It was always about the end point that God yes. is leading his people. The end of Exodus, that there were people who when he moved, yes. they moved. His presence in a cloud of fire by day and a pillar of fire by night. It's like God was on the move. Yeah. He's calling them to follow, but he's in the midst of them. Yeah. He is not outside because they were unclean. Yeah. You get that kind of, well, God's going to position them outside on a mountaintop. No. And they can see, no, he came down from yeah. the mountaintop. He didn't stay at the top yeah. of Sinai Dwelt saying, Moses, you go down and deal with those filthy heathen. No, God said, actually, yeah. I'm going to put myself amongst them yeah. and reveal to them the ultimate price, the highest Beautiful. price, the most extravagant yeah. price that was ever paid for yes. anything yeah. ever coming. And that, that's what I love, the fact you said, no, this tabernacle looks elaborate, looks extravagant, looks uh, expensive. But and why would you go with white in the yeah, middle of the why desert? Would you it doesn't make just sense. Like going, what are you guys doing? But actually, it's, it's showing us that actually Jesus isn't the cheaper version of it. It's not yeah. like dumbing it down. Okay, yeah, yeah, X, Y, Z to Jesus. No, Jesus is way more elaborate. When was, it's the mystery the angels long to look into. They go, yeah, yeah. tabernacle yet, but Jesus becoming flesh, yeah. the word becoming flesh and yeah. moving into our neighborhood. What that and to so that men could become the sons no, of God. It's, it's just it's much more complex and act, but and actually and yet simple for easy people like us to step in with boldness and confidence. We don't have to have it all figured out, but we just have to trust that actually He is enough. Yeah. And, and we get access to God. It's, yeah. That should hit us. We get access to God here and now. I'm like, yeah. should blow we, we don't we don't have 40 weeks to work through every detail yeah. of the altar and this. But but I would encourage you, go and study. You yeah. will see Jesus in yeah. all of it. You will see the promises of Come God on. in all of it. Yes. You will see the favor and you will see ultimately his cross revealing the perfection of what, mm. what could have, should have been. And yet yes. God was restoring and he did it all on the cross. And I yeah. love that. Yeah. And, and God is calling us as a people. He's calling you to move again. Yeah. We don't preach series with these names like move again and activate just so that yeah. it excites the church. Yeah. God is calling his people to be a people who yes. when he moves, yes. we move. Yeah. When he speaks to us about areas of our lives, we yeah. move. That he calls us to move out, some out of addiction, out of bad cycles, of, yeah. out, of, out of smallness, out of pain, out of our past. To unhook the trailers and leave them. You try yes. to pull a trailer through the desert, you will, you will get stuck in the sand. But then to move yeah. through, to move through the desert. Yeah. Don't just stay there, don't become good at desert dwelling, yeah. which I think too many believers do. It's like, life's hard, but one day in heaven, it'll be yeah. good. I'm going, where's that the promises yeah. of Christ? And that's if life and life yeah. abundant. That's the narrative of Exodus. That yeah. I think if we stop at chapter 20, then it's, it's just all about your freedom. And actually God says, yes, I, I've set you free, but for a purpose. Yeah. And actually the purpose is even the Ten Commandments aren't a restrictive. They're there trying to show the people that actually I've called you to live not as slaves, but yeah. as free people. And this is how you are to live and represent me to a world that is longing to be free. Incredible, yeah, yeah. And, and that's when you start to understand that in chapter 25, 40, is this to 40 in Exodus is how we worship God and how we engage, use our freedom. The purpose of our freedom is to worship Him. So yeah. they may worship me. And that's what you're created for. And, and if we lose our, if we dumb it down to any other level, that's when we get bored. That's when we realize, we think, is, is this all there is? Actually, we... We haven't bought into a system. We've bought into a person named Jesus who's leading us into the very throne room of God. And you get that. I get that. I love the fact yeah. that we, if you read in between the, in the narratives there, the man who, the first man who gets filled with the Spirit of God in the Bible is a man called Bezalel, who's the architect of the tabernacle. Amazing. Bezalel, have you heard of that guy? Have you named one of your kids that is not one of the top ten names? But he, the Bible says he was filled with the Spirit of the Lord, the first time we see that phrase in the Bible, and he's the guy that gets the task to get all these, these measurements and these descriptions from Moses to build the tabernacle. And I go, that, that's, that excites me, that this is not something that's out there for the spiritual elite. No, it's for ordinary people like us, ordinary people like you yeah. at home. And you say, I'm just an accountant. I'm just, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. But actually, actually, this is the invitation. Move on in into the mysteries of God. You get invited in the Spirit yeah. of God. Come if on. he can fill a man called Bezalel, he can, how much more can he fill you on, in the better covenants based on better promises in Christ fill you in your everyday reality to encounter him in a, in a yeah. special way. So God's calling us to move out, move yeah. through, move in. And he's speaking to us through the book of Exodus. Will you jump in? Maybe you're saying, well, I've missed the first half of the series. Go and listen. Go yeah. and read. Be in the word of God yourself, please. Finish the series. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and we want God to move with us. We mm. want God not move with us. God is moving and he's calling us to move with him. Yeah. And he's leading us and he's inspired us. Gabe, has your pool moved from green to blue? It has not yet. Uh, I've got the I've lent into community and yes. I've got the advice of a trusted sage in our community around this thing called Keith Hickman. Yeah. And he's given me advice. I've written it down. And I'm, uh, I'm like the rebellious Israelites at the moment. I, yes. I know what to do, but I'm, I'm not following through. But I'll give you feedback in the next week. We we, people are asking. People want to walk with they us. They want to know. Yeah, they yeah. want to see the photos. They want to see the fruit. Could so you Insta 
the photos yeah, about yeah. the pool. There'll definitely be photos. Maybe a photo of you in the pool. No, no, that, that, that might be a line too far. The winter in Cape Town has got a little bit nippy. Okay. But, um, but okay. We'll, we'll, we'll keep everyone up to date to that. It's a whole new world. For very people, helpful, you know? very helpful. Again, church, lots happening. It is Mother's yeah. Day this weekend. Yay. Bring your mum. Come on. Bring your mother, how, whatever mama, whatever yeah. you call her. You want to bring her along. You want to invite her. Maybe they're far away. Invite them to join us online. Yeah, be wonderful. blessed. But if you're in person and be any one of the five meetings across Sunday, you will be blessed, moms. Yeah. You will be looked after. You'll be spoiled. And we're going to take moments and yeah. make sure that God is ministering be because God has knitted his family together in such beautiful, specific ways. So we love you. Come on. Have an amazing, amazing week. And move again.